Hey, Jen Banks here. This is the podcast A is for Adversity, and I'm going to talk about being more intentional about our thoughts and our goals so we can make our lives happen instead of letting life happen to us. Hello again. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you for being you. In Young Women's Growing Up, there were so many lessons on self-worth, and those were so helpful, especially in building my confidence during those crucial formative years. So I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you to all of the leaders that I had. You were so important in helping me see myself, how God sees me, and I can't thank you enough. I remember one particular lesson, probably because of the handout. It was a framed quote, and it said, Be yourself. You are the most qualified. And that was said by Frank Giblin. And it's so true. If we're ourselves, nobody can tell us we're doing it wrong, because how do they know how we're supposed to be? (laughs) We were all born with our value. No one is more or less than another person, And there's nothing we can do to change our value. So what about when others don't see our value? We'll get to self-love in a minute, but what others think about you is about them. And frankly, it's none of your business. This goes back to the model I shared in the first episode. Their thoughts are part of their model and what they're thinking and perceiving. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. No one can make you. It's your own thoughts, positive or negative, that contribute to your feelings of self-esteem. No one is that powerful, really, to control you and your thoughts that way. It's up to you how you feel about you. It's your job to love you. And if they don't love you, well, they're just missing out. (sighs) You don't need everyone to love you. And it's just your perception of whether they do or not anyway. I didn't used to know this. I didn't used to think this way. And obviously, I'm still working on it. But one time, Jody Moore, in one of her earlier episodes, challenged her listeners to think of an experience that they view negatively. And she reminded us of the thought that This is exactly how it was supposed to happen, and she challenged us to see the good in the situation. So I was like, all right, Jody, (laughs) here you go. So I thought of the worst experience that I could think of in my life and tried to see the good in it. And it was hard at first, but I eventually got there. So here's the story. In high school, after my sophomore year, my high school got split. Half of my graduating class went to a high school that was built in a neighboring town. And that was very sad. I lost a lot of good friends that way. So fast forward to my senior year where I already have a modified friend group. (laughs) And there was a boy, very cute, in my English class that I grew to like over the course of a few weeks. And I was smitten and just doing everything I could to try and win him over. (laughs) And one day at lunch, I overheard another girl talking about how she liked him too. And she also shared that she had kissed over 30 boys. So I, silly me, took that information. And one day I was texting this cute boy and I shared with him that piece of information that she had kissed all these boys. And lo and behold, they were hanging out together at that moment. (laughs) Oh my goodness. This girl was also on the drill team. So of course she shared it with everybody there. And pretty soon I had no friends, zero. I ate lunch alone. I retreated to my car because I couldn't bear to be in the school. And so that was the example that came to mind when Jody Moore challenged me to see the good in every situation. (laughs) And looking back, I was able to see that it was during that time that I really developed a relationship with myself. I got to know myself better. I became my own best friend. And it was really good for me to spend that one-on-one time with myself despite the uncomfortableness I felt going to school every day. 
that girl also told me many times that I should repent and that I was a terrible person and I believed her, but I worked through it and eventually rebuilt that relationship with myself over time. In our relationship with ourself, trust is huge. Do you keep the promises you make to yourself? If you say you're going to exercise, do you do it? If you say you're going to only watch one more episode or only eat one more brownie, do you stick to that? It's so funny that we are often better at keeping our promises to others than we are to ourselves. Why is that? Also, how are you with your goals? Are you the best version of yourself? Are you working towards the next version of yourself? In the next episode, I'm going to talk a lot about goals and holding ourselves accountable. So stay tuned for that. And lastly, compassion. Are you compassionate with yourself? When you make mistakes, do you say, it's okay, I love you anyway? How do you show up when you're around other people? Do you show up in a way that you think they want you to? There's a quote by Raymond Hull, and he says, He who trims himself to suit everyone will soon whittle himself away. And I think that's so true. When we're with other people and we're not genuine, we're just a watered down version of ourself. It's also just your perception, like I said, of how you think that they want you to be. So you might not even be right. Also, I'd like to offer you the thought that what if they're wrong about you? They can be wrong and you know you best. How do you love yourself more? I'm going to go through four ways that we can better love ourselves. First of all is affirmations. I'm sure you've heard of the five love languages. Well, mine is words of affirmation. With affirmations, you start small. Make sure it's something that your brain won't reject right away. It's something that it will believe. And if you need to, start from a place of curiosity. But every morning in the mirror, you can tell yourself things that will help you love yourself more. Right now I'm pregnant and my body isn't in the best shape. And while pregnancy is beautiful, I could just begin with a thought such as, wow, my body is amazing. It is carrying this baby. It doesn't have, I don't have to tell myself I'm beautiful if I'm not in that place of believing quite yet. Next is self-care. Do you do what it takes to meet your needs? If creativity is one of your needs, do you take time to work in a space of creativity? Next is avoid comparison. This is a huge one. I know that when we compare ourselves, we are often comparing our weakness with someone else's strength. That's not very fair. (laughs) And then lastly, get to know you. This includes feeling your feelings and processing your emotions, but Truly, do you know yourself? Do you know what you like to do? What your hobbies and interests are? It's definitely a journey, but whether you get started or not, the time will pass anyway. Your weekly wisdom is a bit cheesy, but it's so true, so stay with me. It's by Barbie from the 12 Dancing Princesses, and what she says is, there is a difference only you can make. Go out and be awesome. Awesome.